Welcome to my thoughts on the 90s X-Men animated TV show, season 3, episodes 6 and 7. These are the Phoenix Saga parts 4 and 5, Starjammers and Child of Light. So, spoilers for these two episodes as well as the ones leading up to it. Another two episodes I absolutely love. Uh, in the description box, there's a link to donate to support the SAG AFTRA strike. And I urge you to do so. It's a really important strike. Deserves as much support as you can. There's some also some links in the description box to videos that talk about why it is such an important strike. So, let's dive right in the Star Jammers. And so, so yeah, Jean, you know, the Phoenix explains through Jean, this body is young and strong. It will recover quickly. So we... I, I forget if it's the very first time we, we see it on the show, but clearly the, the phoenix, you know, sometimes takes over and talks, you know, that's not Jean saying that. Why would she be referring to herself in the third person like that? And, yeah, when, when the phoenix, um, yeah, the phoenix transports them, which is also, like, we've never seen any of the X-Men be this powerful. Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, the Phoenix is basically the most powerful being we've seen on the show so far. And, you know, we see a couple of people on Earth react to it, including Captain Britain, Emma Frost, whose telepathy is triggered, and I do believe we're going to see her again later, and the um, club that she's a part of, which has been renamed, if I recall. But, but yeah, it makes sense that she would, and, and this might actually be what leads them to take an interest in the Phoenix. And Doctor Strange also picks it up, and yeah, that is, you know, Doctor Strange picks up on something extremely powerful. That is, you know, part of his M.O. And... Yeah, the the star jammers are very very cool, and the the just yeah like we've gone we've gone very Star Wars in now. Uh, you know the show has alien pirates, just yeah, and you know I want to say his name is Corsair, is actually Cyclops's father, and you know Gene. Through Phoenix can can pick up on the you know through the psychic and and you know you have this this line where Corsair says I would know my eldest son by his eyes, but he can't see Cyclops' eyes because of Cyclops' power, so he does not recognize him. And here we do get some background on Cyclops, a character that's otherwise not really been we don't know that much about his background and yeah you know the x-men are now going further into space they're meeting aliens that are not she are and i quite appreciate the negotiations that you know at at first you know the the she are are like oh, this freaking i pirate no honor kind of thing you know Oh, by the way, I've got that one thing you're extremely interested in. I will give you anything you want for that. Ugh, I don't want it, the whole thing. I just want half. Half of the treasury. It just, wow. And we do realize afterwards, you know, that's not actually what he wants. He wants to kill the Ken. But he knows that if he just, you know, if he doesn't play up the whole pirate thing, Deken is going to figure out that there's something going on. And, yeah, Corsair wants Cyclops to be the one to kill Deken. And, you know, because Deken killed his wife. And, you know, Cyclops is like, does he know about this? He knows. Yeah, but for him, it was Tuesday. And, yeah, so the, the, you know, it seems like the attack might have a chance, but Deken sent a double. And, you know, it in real life, important political figures do sometimes use doubles, 
and the the you know sci-fi version of that is of course a changeling and yeah very cool when several of them hold the door and I do appreciate this point that you know as strong as Beast is like Rogue is so much stronger you know I, f I forget if we don't we don't really know in this in, in this exact universe exactly how Ms. Marvel got her powers but like it is ridiculous how strong physically strong she is and yeah you know Deken does manage to to open the crystal calls upon the world with no name now why in God's name could the people the ancient Shi'ar ancestors not think of a name for this world and yeah that is the the biggest to be continued of the show so far that we leave off on and that brings us to episode uh, yeah the next episode child of light which is the final part of the Phoenix saga and yeah this is you know this episode goes as big as this entire story goes and this entire show so far has gone like there's been times where it's like the entire you know planet like all of earth is in the balance but this is the first time that it's like the entire galaxy and the the galaxy the, the galaxy that the Shi'ar are from as well I can only imagine that this didn't mean what it does today and I acknowledge that it's you know according to the subtitles it's spelled different but the lizard star jammer is apparently called chode that's how they pronounce it you know and yeah you know the crystal is unlocked unlocked and it really sucks and let's see they kind of sort of have storm do the weather report to to Xavier that's slightly amusing to me and you know we see like this you know they get yeah they're once once you know the the x-men are inside the the <clears throat> mcron the you know we see all this like pulsating brain matter on like the ground really reminded me of akira which yeah very nicely done and yeah you know the they're unable to attack Deken, you know, which again, like, raises him to, like, he's one of the first enemies that they've just not been able to at all affect. Like, even like Apocalypse and Sinister, they eventually manage to, to affect, you know, and like the, I forget which species it was called, but the, the, alien that was imprisoned until they freed it on earth you know they they managed to find a way and um, see. yeah and and Deken takes m a number of forms and I like that when we see this montage of global problems I believe one of the people we see is Sunfire again very cool we see Spider-Man, not not like in great detail, but we see like Web being shot, and I think we even see the, you know, iconic finger pose for the just yeah, and someone that might be Iron Man, although I suppose it looks a little more like War Machine, but yeah, you know, you could like they would be trying to help with this sort of thing. Deken laughs a lot. He's just a real jolly guy. And yeah, the Phoenix rises yet again and is able to to solve the whole thing. And she, you know, she gives Wolverine a kiss on the cheek. And Cyclops a full-on kiss. And yeah. 
you know, once again, self-sacrifice from, from Jean, which also happened in part one of the Phoenix Saga on the show. And this time it seems permanent, but, you know, Xavier says, you know, maybe there is still hope. And, yeah, if you've read the comics, you know this is not the last we see of the Phoenix. And, yeah, just, you know... Yeah, uh, uh, so briefly about the entire Phoenix Saga, at least as depicted on the show. I, you know, I forget uh, there might be, like, somewhat more to it in the in the comics. You know, the thing with comics, uh, the, you know, comics versus the show, comic books, like, you could tell, you can stretch out a story over a very long time. And, you know, maybe sometimes it's this little background thing where in, like, you know, uh, like, a couple of years ago, yeah, actually, I guess when the Dark Phoenix movie, the you know the second botched live action attempt at adapting that storyline, you know when that came out, I got from the the library the the collection that has the the Phoenix stories, and it's like it's an like there's there's hours of reading there, you know that is. Actually, I suppose maybe if you look at all of the episodes combined that that lead to this, but but anyway, you know, I can imagine they might have trimmed some stuff down, but the the you know yeah they they do a really great job going further into the the space stuff, which you know the the pri the crashed prison ship introduces the the space stuff that's the I, i'm pretty sure that's the first time that the the this show that the x-men encounter actual aliens you know they've encountered astral plane being and the you know not everyone's a mutant some are cyborgs and such but it is the the first time that they actually encounter aliens and over the course of it, yeah, we go from, you know, at first it's just, okay, get on a human space shuttle and, you know, go on a mission. You know, they do missions in space now. Cool. And then, you know, we meet more and more aliens and, you know, yeah, encounter this incredible power. And... Yeah, they just they, they do a really good job of expanding. You know, in the in the comics, the X Men have a number of adventures in in space. I'm not sure they, you know, yeah, they only have five seasons total, so they can't do all of them. But I think they do at least one more of the really prominent, really beloved storylines. But the let's see the the. There was another thing I wanted to say. Right, right. And, you know, the thing with Deken, you know, in real life, you know, it's not like galaxy destruction, but a lot of real life problems have been caused by powerful people who wanted more power, who weren't happy with how powerful they already were. You know, so... Yeah, it's it's very relevant, uh, you know, like the the show the text of the show is good guys fight power hungry people who don't care what they destroy, you know. So yeah, the the I can imagine a number of the kids who grew up on this show, you know, once we started hearing really bad things about Elon Musk and I can't believe I'm blanking on uh, the the Amazon guy. The, um, Jeff Bezos, you know, yeah, some of these people, yeah, you know, the, these kids, not kids by that point anymore, but you know, the the these viewers were like, okay. You know, X Men warned me about this. This is not. This is unacceptable. We have to stop this. And I 
think that might be... Poor Jubilee, she really did not get to participate much at all. Like, she, you know, she got captured back in part one. It was a little bit in the in the castle in, like, part three. And then part four and five, she's just standing in the castle waiting for them to return, which I suppose for a lot of the, the kids and teenagers watching is like, yep, same. This is exactly how things go. Uh, you know, the adults go and, and do a thing, and I just have to sit here and wait for them to, to return. So, yeah, that... It'll, maybe a little too close to home. I think that's everything I have to say about these two. Um, yeah, just really, really loving the the space-oriented X-Men stuff. Really glad that they got there and got there so much sooner than like the movies, like. As someone who's read the comics, it felt so ridiculous that it took them so many movies to get to aliens. And then they don't even, like, they could embrace it so much more than they do in the in the live-action movies. But, you know, now that the X-Men are gradually coming to the MCU, you know, that is almost definitely going to be addressed since the MCU has done... It's 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 gone somewhat into the the cosmic. It's not that every story is cosmic, but yeah, that's it for this one. So uh, catch you tomorrow. Make my Marvel.